Welcome to Pace IT's Career and Entrepreneurship Presentations. My name is Mary Keeney, and this presentation covers legal structures and funding. We are going to discuss types of legal structures and sources of funding. There are several ways you can set up your company. It can be a sole pr proprietorship, which means you are the only one employee in your company. It can be a limited partnership if you decide to take on one or more partners. It can also be a limited liability company that allows you to be a lot more flexible as you grow. Or it can be a C-Corp if you decide you want to attract angel investors and venture capitalists and issue them stock in your company in exchange for their investment. Sole proprietorship is good for people who have very limited or non-existing potential of being sued. In the case of a lawsuit, since the company is you, you become liable to pay any potential damages, thus all your assets, including your house, your car, any investments, savings, etc., become subject of payment for damages due to your clients. For the partnership, you never start a business with someone else without having a clear agreement in writing. The agreement should state everyone's responsibilities, how much each invested in the company, what is expected in the case of sale of the company, or separation, that is when uh, one of the partners went out or if there's a death. Even if you are going into business with a loved one, you still need to have that agreement in place. People change and you never know who you or your partners will change in the face of success or failure. It is better to have clear rules for who does what and how the proceeds of the business will be split. A corporate structure is a great setup if you decide to take investors money. If you issue stock you will need to have a C Corp. It will be easier to file for an IPO in that case. And then you won't need to change the structure to go from private to public. There are multiple funding options. Of course, there's personal investments. Even if you go out to raise money from angels and VCs, they will ask you what type of investment you want to make on for your own company. If you didn't make any, why should they? If it is sweat equity, that's all the work you've put in it, you have to show something. Sweat equity is essentially you working for free for many, many hours. Realistically, you will have that and some startup expenses that you had to make in order to do anything. It can be as little as just your laptop and the software you needed to build the app. Personal investment has pros and cons. It's great to have no investors to tell you how to run your business, and it's fast and easy to start your business. However, you can run out of your savings very quickly, and if your company fails, then you lose all the money. Friends and family are another source. You want to keep in mind, though, the Thanksgiving rule, which means uh, you want to be comfortable sitting at Thanksgiving or a family gathering with your friends and family if you are successful or if you fail. Because if you've failed, you will be sitting with people who have funded you. And if you're doing great, you'll be sitting with people who maybe didn't fund you. So you want to make sure that uh, it's not going to be a difficult situation for you. You might also require a lot of money to start up, in which case you're going to need investment bankers and venture capitalists, also called VCs. They will have large amounts of money and you will have an accelerated growth. Unfortunately, large chunks of, of the company and control you might have to give up to them. You also will have to find the right ones. Most VCs specialize in specific areas. Some invest only in clean technology, so only in hardware companies, so only in internet companies. So it will take a bit of research on your part to find the right one for you. Another option is bank loans. Some startups find that bank loans are almost an impractical choice, especially after 2008 and the economic crash. Even SBA loans, which are backed by the federal government, require an enormous amount of collateral. Plus, loans seem to be given to people who don't need them. 
those who need them are required to put an equal amount of collateral either in cash or in assets like your house, your investments, or your 401k, etc. It is a loan and you're not giving up control or equity, but it pretty much freezes your own personal assets until you pay off that loan. In the case of a default, you lose all your assets. Now for an IPO, it works just like, uh, it works for a startup that is not in its infancy anymore. So if you're at day one of your startup, this isn't necessarily going to be a good option for you. You have to prove some level of success before you go public. At the end of the day, you first have to convince big firms like JP Morgan to underwrite you. Without them, you have no IPO. It also requires a lot of legal work. There will be a lot of document filing that is required by the Security Exchange Commission. So you ask now, what type of funding is best for you? And it depends. And it's complicated. It really depends on a bunch of factors like how much money do you need or want to raise? How long do you think it'll take you to be in the black making a profit so you, to where you don't need additional investments? And how much or how little control do you want to give up? There are more creative ways to get funding than the ones listed in this presentation. There are private loans from either friends or family or groups of investors who prepare to get interest from the money they loan rather than equity in exchange for the investments. Companies that make stuff, there are things like factoring, which is money that will pay for the manufacturing of the products. The money is given at a negotiable interest rate and is secured by the purchase orders you have from retailers. To get the best answer for you, consult with your advisory board and with an accountant who has knowledge in this area. Also, never forget legal fees and legal implications. Any investment or loan comes with an agreement. Even if the agreement is between you and your parents, have a lawyer review it. The last thing you want is for your business to fail and have your parents blame you for wasting all of their retirement money. Or having to move in with them as a result. You want to make sure that your investors understand the risks. The business plan template has a statement about that. But to make sure, since I'm not a lawyer and cannot give legal advice, please check with someone who is qualified to advise you on these topics. The topics we've covered today are types of legal structures and sources of funding. I hope this has been a helpful presentation and thank you for watching our video.